All right, thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm Mike Lasus. I'm the superintendent of the school district. Um, I'm just going to go through a brief presentation regarding some of the uh, updates and changes concerning the referendum. Uh, I'm not going to start from scratch and, uh, and rehash uh, what's been presented before or what is posted on our uh, website, uh, but just kind of give an update and overview of where we are right now. And then um, the board will come back on stage and uh, we'll open up the discussion. Um, so uh, as probably everyone in this room knows, there are six projects that are currently um, included in the referendum uh, scheduled for April. Uh, we've got the renovation of this auditorium that we're seated in right now, uh, the conversion of the middle school auditorium into other kinds of spaces, uh, construction of a new middle school auditorium, uh, construction of six additional elementary classrooms throughout the districts, district, rather, and then upgrades to two of our field um, uh, field complexes, one behind the high school here, and then the other down at Cougar Field. Uh, so I'll start with the renovation of the auditorium. The uh, changes since the last presentation in November uh, are that we have um, confirmed that we are going to include in the renovation of this uh, facility uh, a, new roofing, a new roofing system, as well as a new HVAC system. And we also learned uh, just today, we got notification from the state that this portion of the referendum will be eligible for debt service or debt relief. Uh, and what that means is that the state will offset uh, some of the cost of the debt uh, associated with the referendum or with the project. Uh, so the, uh, the state share of this, of this portion of the project would be a little bit over $1 million. So that was good news that we got today. In terms of the middle school auditorium and converting that into classroom space and um, uh, professional office space, uh, the, the cost there is about $3.4 million. We also were notified today that that project will be eligible for debt relief as well. Uh, and that's all portions of that project, both the classrooms uh, and the, uh, the professional office space. More good news. Uh, and this is just a rough uh, sketch or rough drawing of what that internal uh, space would look like. You can see that on the current uh, stage of the auditorium, we have about three robotics or computer labs. Uh, then we'd have office areas uh, sort of in the middle of, of where the current auditorium is. Uh, and then a flexible classroom that we could use uh, in district and also could open up to um, uh, you know, other groups in the evening, like the adult school uh, for use. That's the, that's the site that I labeled media classroom. The new auditorium, uh, since our last presentation, uh, the board and the administration have worked with our architects who are here with us tonight, uh, and will be up on stage to help us answer questions, uh, to reduce the size of that auditorium from about uh, a little over 1,100 or 1,150 seats to about 975, uh, which still would accommodate our middle school population within about five years once the, the bubble that's exiting Lafayette comes through. Uh, that resulted in a reduction in total cost uh, uh, of about $10.8 million. Uh, this is just a site of where the new auditorium would be built. That currently is the, uh, the circle, the field in the, in the circle uh, in the front of the building. And another preliminary uh, rough sketch of what the, the seating layout would look like, um, subject to modification uh, if the referendum were to pass. Um, the elementary classrooms since the last presentation, um, what the board has determined and what uh, the administration, the architects have discussed is shrinking that portion of the project from eight classrooms total down to six. The six classrooms would be built at Washington Avenue School and at Milton Avenue School. And the thinking there is that at Milton Avenue, we can build up and do a two-story addition. Uh, it's the cheapest in terms of uh, square footage of the three elementary buildings that we have in the district. Uh, so if we were to build four classrooms at Milton and two at Washington, uh, it would be a net gain of six classrooms. We'd move a couple of our programs currently housed at Southern uh, over to Milton, and then we would be able to have a net gain of two classrooms in each of the elementary schools. Uh, we also learned that, that uh, a portion of those projects also qualified for uh, state debt relief, uh, totaling about $400,000. Uh, 
so this is Washington Avenue. Um, and you can see that uh, if you're familiar with that building, uh, there's a, a kind of like a back wing if you go through the main entrance. And if you were to go straight down the hallway, uh, past the all-purpose room and, and hang a right, uh, the addition would be put on uh, right at the end of that uh, wing. Over at Milton, uh, it's kind of the opposite. If you walk into Milton Avenue School and go toward your left, uh, you just would walk down to the end of the hall. Uh, we already have two stories uh, on Milton Avenue School, so that would be a two-story addition at the end of that um, hallway to your left. Uh, in terms of Cougar Field, uh, there has not been any change since the, the last meeting. Uh, Cougar Field is um, targeted for a number of improvements or uh, replacement of, of various items such as bleachers and fencing and so forth. Uh, and there is a, a crushed stone path that we've included in this plan uh, that could be used for uh, walking or running. In terms of the fields behind us, uh, the board sought to try to reduce the cost associated with that portion of the project. And the thinking there was to um, not turf the entire uh, property or the entire field, uh, but instead look to turf primarily the varsity baseball field, uh, and then situate a multi-purpose field in the outfield, and then leave the remaining portion of the, the field as natural grass. And the architects, of course, can speak to why that's a little bit less costly to do than to turf the whole field. Uh, but the estimate then has, has shrunk down a little bit to $3 million. Uh, and if you were to look at the, the site or a preliminary sketch of what that would look like, there are two baseball fields. You can see uh, that is this, the same uh, situation as the current two baseball fields. And then there's a rectangle there that shows the multi-purpose field in the uh, right and center field of the varsity baseball field. Uh, so as of uh, now, uh, again, this is a, a little bit different than uh, when we were uh, meeting in November. Uh, the total estimate for all of those projects comes in a little bit under $25 million. Uh, if you look at the state um, debt service numbers that we got today, uh, then the net tax impact is reduced further. Uh, that comes down to uh, slightly below $22 million. Uh, so uh, we've estimated, and, and these are estimates, estimates I want to stress, and they also include um, what we've discussed previously, which is that some of the uh, district's current debt is coming due uh, this year, and so therefore there's, a, there's kind of a, a reduction in, in tax impact associated with that. Uh, but per $100,000 of home value, we have the, uh, uh, the figures posted here, again, the estimates. And then we've just multiplied that out uh, by various uh, you know, values of, of homes in both communities. And so these are the estimates that we're working with now. What will happen now, now that we got the debt, debt relief uh, figures from the state, is that we will speak with our own um, uh, consultants and, and so forth who will help, who help us with the, uh, the referendum process and will shore up these, these estimates. And that is basically the, uh, the updates as of today. So I'll end the presentation here. Yes, and our business administrator is just reminding us that as you uh, come up to ask your questions or, um, or give your feedback, you could just sign in uh, on the, the sheet there that's on the, the little desk next to the microphone. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're going to move on to the public commentary section, which is going to be focused on the, the referendum and any comments in terms of what's changed since our last um, meeting, whereby we have taken the number down from in the 28 plus million dollar range down to below 25 million, and then as a, a net basis, a tax basis, the impact being less than 22 million dollars. Uh, we are going to limit the comments to um, three minutes. Uh, we are going to keep time up here, so we are going to try to keep that to a very strict regiment. Uh, we do um, would like for this meeting to be done by uh, 9 p.m. tonight. Um, with that, make sure when you come up, please sign in, state your name and where you live, and then ask your questions and direct them to um, the board. 
questions? Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Len Resto, 35 Center Street in the Borough. First, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Chair Belding for a wonderful job that he's done for two years. He's provided great leadership, and it's very much appreciated. Um, I come here to you know ask questions, but certainly to let you know that the proposed uh, Performing Arts Center at the middle school. I think is something that is premature. Um, I think that with the availability locally of the Performing Arts Center in Newark, which they would make available at any time upon request, the uh, Milburn Playhouse, the Morristown uh, Community Playhouse, um, even the Chatham Playhouse, that we have multiple opportunities to use those rather than to spend money at this time uh, to build. You know, inarguably, Chatham does have the best schools in this state. But the one thing we have to keep in mind is that we need to have the best schools that money can afford, not the best schools that money can buy. And money is a finite product. I just turned 62 yesterday. Don't feel 62, but I turned 62. And I have 10 couples that I know that are moving out of state because of taxes. <clears throat> when I moved into Chatham in 1995, my taxes were $4,200 a year. They're now 13,313. <coughs> With the math I did on the back of the uh, paper I had, I'm now looking at another increase of $212. And so, you know, I look at that and I just say, this is, you know, at what point do I reach before I have to say, I can't retire here? And a community is enriched when you have seniors and students and those in between living together. If you have your seniors living town, you do not have that rich interaction that you need which is very important for students. So let's keep that in mind. Um, I also look at this auditorium and wonder how many seats are here. I see that for the middle school, we're proposing 975 seats. I have no idea how many seats are here, but why can't we bring middle students here instead of building a duplicate over at the middle school? So what I would propose is let's you know, whatever we have, let's repair what we have here. Let's have middle school students use what's here. But at the same time, let's start building a fund for capital improvements so that as we go on, we then have the money for those capital improvements as time goes on. Mr. Rescue, about 20 seconds. Okay. okay, and we don't have, you know, these 10, $12 million <clears throat> Uh, construction numbers that come at us that really increase our taxes and pretty much force people like myself who are coming upon retirement out of town. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is, well, my name is Sal Arnick. I live in the township 37 Hall Road. I have uh, three children who've gone through the system. One is still in high school, and two of them are in college. Two of my children were very involved in performing arts. Um, I should also tell you I'm president of the, uh, co-president of the Chatham Music and Theater Boosters. Two of my kids were very involved in music, performing arts, acting, and one was very involved in athletics. I applaud all of you for taking such a balanced approach because too often performing arts and drama is put to the wayside. It's always the laggard, and it's unfortunate because these, act, these actions not only improve our students in science and math and their performance in the regular, uh, you know, three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, uh, but they teach our children to communicate and look people in the eye. It gives them confidence. It gives them leadership. It makes young men and women who are leaders and world changers as opposed to worker bees. So uh, I applaud you for, uh, for taking care of performing arts in this proposal. 
Secondly, I respect everything that the gentleman uh, prior to me talked about and the challenge it is for seniors. But I'd also like to point out that two meetings ago, there was a, an elderly gentleman who pointed out that 60 years ago, the citizens of Chatham were faced with a very, very large uh, expenditure of constructing schools. And these guys, their kids were done. They were through the system, and they choose to invest in the children of the future. They didn't treat it as a cost. They treated it as an investment. And here we are today, and we're being placed in the same position as those of a greater generation and asked to make a sacrifice. And the sacrifice, 200 bucks a year, of course no one wants to pay more taxes, but if you break it down, it's a, it's a cup of Starbucks a week. So if you think about it, a cup of Starbucks a week to give our children this balanced referendum, <laughs> athletic fields, performing arts facilities, um, I would, I would like people to consider thinking, it, thinking of it in that way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Arnuk. I just wanted to um, answer a couple of Mr. Resto's questions, uh, if I could. And of course, board members can jump in too. But uh, there are about 700 seats in this uh, auditorium. Um, we, we believe that we're at a point where we have to make investments in both auditoriums. We need two auditoriums uh, in the district. We need one at the middle school, um, as we currently have one. Uh, but that, that building, that facility is in need of repair. It's 70 years old. Uh, it hasn't had any material investment in 70 years. Everything in it is original. Uh, it doesn't have uh, even in a, 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 uh, an air conditioning system, and uh, the, ti the, the flooring is original asbestos tile flooring. Uh, so we need to, to invest in that facility no matter what. Um, our intention has been over the last number of years to try to avoid going out to the voters and asking for uh, more money, uh, knowing how supportive this community is. And we have built up our capital reserve accounts. And that is the way that we funded the uh, pretty significant expansion of the high school right behind us. We, we are just completing 11 classrooms uh, because of the enrollment that we have in the district now. Uh, and what's happened is that we have, over the course of time, with such significant enrollment growth, we've invested in classroom space primarily, also library and media center spaces, and then thirdly, athletic facilities. And we've kind of kicked the can down the road a little bit when it comes to the performing arts. And we think that we're at a point now where we have to make those investments because the facilities that we're using uh, are just not in uh, the condition that is commensurate with the kinds of programs uh, that we run. Uh, so our intention, of course, is to continue to, or to, to rebuild our capital reserve accounts now that we're finished building at the high school and we think we can handle district enrollment. Um, but certainly, we also believe that the, the two facilities, this one and the one at the middle school, are in need of repair now. Just to Nance. augment just to augment those comments, uh, the, the ability that we have to develop or build a capital reserve fund is very limited because of the fact that the state restricts our, um, our surplus per year uh, or our buffer per year to, to 2%. And uh, it's only from that that, we, that these other the construction projects that we that Mike cited have been able to be done without a referendum. But the type of capital expenditure that we're looking at here is way beyond what we could possibly accumulate through our annual surpluses. Nancy Geyer, 7 Inwood Road. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to express our views on this potential referendum. Mm -hmm. And also thank you for having the Board of Ed meetings recorded with information published on how and where to view these nightly meetings. After reviewing the last meeting on January 12th on my television and reviewing the overview of the 2015 referendum projects, I noted the reduction of seats in the Chatham Middle School Auditorium. In a seemingly arbitrary effort to reduce the amount of the referendum, the seating capacity would be reduced from 1,100 to 975, with a savings of about $1 million. Some closing remarks I'd like to make. This is not a substantial savings. Would you tell us how you arrived at the 975 seating capacity 
And why would you build an auditorium costing roughly $10 million that would not even seat the current Chatham Middle School population of 993 students? In light of the fact of all the nuances and complexities, uncertainties and necessities of this referendum, it is my recommendation that the questions for each project be listed separately and let each voter decide on what is feasible for theirs and our tax dollars. It seems unjust for the board to consolidate all questions and eliminate any decisions of the voter by making such a large, complex issue into one question. Thank you. I'll, I'll just um, mention quickly, I'll let the, the board this, you know, talk about uh, separating the question potentially, but the, the 975 number, obviously the larger the auditorium is, the more flexibility we have. So if we had 2,000 seats, we'd be able to entertain having the high school graduation in district again, uh, which is something we haven't been able to do for uh, a couple of years. Um, but the number 975 came about after uh, the board was responsive to the feedback of uh, certain folks in the community about the size of the project. Uh, we looked at other performing arts centers and auditoriums nearby. Uh, for example, Wachung Hills Regional High School, uh, which has a, a really beautiful uh, site or facility that was constructed uh, within the last five or 10 years. Uh, there are 1,000 seats in that uh, facility. Bernard's Township uh, with Ridge High School has a beautiful facility also constructed in the last five or 10 years. Uh, they have 957 seats. Um, Somerset Hills, where Bernard's High School is, has also just over 1,000 seats. So we looked at uh, some comparable districts and uh, facilities and uh, arrived at a number that we thought would be um, a reduction and, and help reduce the cost, but would also satisfy some of our other needs. The middle school population is peaking, basically, right now. This is pretty much the peak year. Next year, it, it'll go up by about 50 kids, but then um, soon thereafter, it's going to start to decline. So by the time the middle school auditorium is built, uh, 975 will accommodate uh, pretty much the entire middle school population. Uh, we may have to wait a year or two but before that, that comes to fruition, but 975 long-term um, is a good number for that uh, particular school. Uh, so I just wanted to hit those couple of points. Yes, sir. Melvin Polachek, the township. I'm going to grab two of my seconds to say that the lack of enthusiasm for the Pledge of Allegiance is something I hope we're not teaching the students. Um, the first gentleman made a great case uh, for being careful with the money. I'd like to mention that I've reached my 74th birthday, and I still need to work. But I am supporting the full referendum. The case was made very eloquently for all the problems upon older people, people facing retirement, the tremendous increase in the tax burden. But the gentleman chose to attack the performing arts and nothing else, which implies a value judgment. The performing arts is not as important as people banging into each other on the football field or jumping high to throw a ball through a hoop, all of which are very valuable things for the culture of our town and our country, but they're not more valuable than the performing arts. I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to walk into a rehearsal hall where perhaps the orchestra or the band or the chorus, by the time they get to high school and have had several years under their belt, how they carry themselves, how they talk to each other. These are children, by the time they're young teenagers, a vast accomplishment. That accomplishment will carry them through the rest of their lives, whether they have a musical or an artistic career or not. Come and have to stand before an audience and speak. If you've been on stage 10 or 20 times, you're going to have an easier time and be more eloquent. 
really doesn't matter how many touchdowns you scored if you're asked to make a pitch for money or to pr promote a project at your place of business. You will have good stories to tell at lunchtime with the guys. I was not an athlete. I played a little bit of intramural, and I've got three or four war stories that I tell at lunch with the guys. So that's an important part of our lives. I've got grandchildren who are athletes, scholars, actors. 30 seconds, sir. Musicians. And I don't want them to lose any of those opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Helena Axelrod, 41 Coleman Avenue West in the borough. Um, and I just want to say that I don't think this is the retired people versus the people who have, you know, kids in the schools. This is all really about what can we afford and how can we be smart about how we spend our money. Um, I know my taxes have gone up $300 a year for the last four years. And 200 or whatever it's going to be on top of that is actually a very significant number. I'm not against performing arts. I'm not against sports. I think they're important in addition to the academic curriculum. Uh, my son was involved in all of these. Um, however, I think that we, we shouldn't get too extravagant. <laughs> with our plans. Now, the two auditoriums need some fixing up. Fine, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. To build a whole new building with a new auditorium really seems to be incredibly excessive to me. Um, I know part of the reason is that you want to relocate the offices of the Board of Education. I can understand the reasons for that. You want to be more central. There's commercial space in town. Uh, I don't see why valuable real estate in a school should be used for that purpose. Uh, that shouldn't be a reason for uh, remodeling completely the, uh, the auditorium in the middle school. Um, regarding additional computer labs, I'm really surprised that you need computer labs anymore. Nobody uses a desktop computer. Everybody's got laptops. You can do everything remotely. You can do everything through online. If there was one course that you could do online, and that is computer science. So that really doesn't make sense to me to have special reserved space for that purpose. Um, likewise, because we have all these possibilities of transmitting electronically things that are going on, the size of an auditorium actually gets to be kind of redundant. Um, if it's transmitted, anybody, anybody can see what's going on in whatever space they're in, on their computer, on their screen, whatever it is. You, have you don't seconds, have to have a physical person in an auditorium anymore. This is a new world. You've got to think in new ways. So that's, that's mainly what I have to say. I think you really have to look at the future, not at the past. The future doesn't need the same things. Thank you. Thank you. You're up. Hi. Jane Devlin, Hickory Place, Chatham Township. <clears throat> to me, the time to say yes or no is at the ballot box, not tonight. It seems to me tonight is more about questions and answers. Um, so moving forward, that's what I would like to speak about. I think all these improvements are long overdue. I don't think the board is being arbitrary about this. I think they are acting in direct response to requests and needs that have been identified throughout the years in the Chatham community and the Chatham schools, and they're now just defining this is probably the best time to act. I would like to ask the board to please clarify what is meant by a performing arts center. 
because I think maybe people are thinking of it like the Wachong Center or the Mayo Performing Arts. I'm interpreting it a little more like the student body auditorium. So, so maybe if we all just understood a little better how it would differ from a outside performing arts center, that might help um, help with understanding. And I would also like to ask my second question: If we're shaving some money off the original proposal, how much are we actually saving? And are we being kind of penny wise and dollar foolish? Yes, we want to save the money, but if this is the best time to make all the improvements and to do it right the first way, does it really make sense to just save a little bit of money and, and maybe not do it as um, ideally envisioned? So the two questions are to clarify about Performing Arts Center in the hopes of maybe allaying some of the concerns of what that means, and to talk a little bit about how sensible it is to save a few pennies on a dollar. Thank you. Well, I'd like to, on, on one, the, as we hear, and we've heard a, num a number of public comments, is that uh, every dollar matters to a lot of people. So what we've done is taken down <clears throat> the numbers whereby we can achieve what we're looking to do in all these different projects at the lowest amount of dollars. So we, um, we were cognizant for everybody, uh, but we do need and feel across this board, since of our support of it, that we do need to make these investments, but we've made these investments at figures as low as possible, yet achieving the highest yield for what we're looking okay. to do. So you do feel, though, that the <laughs> highest yield will still come about with these, hopefully with these figures? Um, I'll, I'll speak upon, uh, for myself, is the answer is yes. Okay, um, great. If everyone else would like to keep saying that that's, my assumption would be yes. Super. Ms. Devlin, I'll just say I think it's a, a matter of semantics, the difference between an auditorium and a performing arts center. Uh, this is the Chatham High School slash Lafayette Avenue School auditorium. It is the site of all the performing arts performances, uh, whether it's the spring musical that will take place uh, in a month, or it's the fall play, or it's all of the various concerts that take place in both buildings, or it's the head show, or whatever it might be, those are the performing arts, and they, they happen here. Um, obviously, this the, the projects that we're contemplating are not going to raise the, the quality of our auditorium spaces to that of um, the NJ Pack or the uh, Paper Mill Playhouse, or what have you. Uh, but whenever we upgrade a facility, especially one that hasn't been touched in 70 years or 40 years, uh, we're going to benefit from advancements in uh, you know, technology and, and so on and so forth. So they'll become more modern spaces that are probably going to be much, much more attractive and much, much more functional uh, for what we want to do with them. Uh, I'll go back to Miss um, Axelrod just quickly. Um, I hope your son is doing well because I remember him very, very well from his time at Chatham High School. Um, we have looked at commercial space, both for office uh, space and for uh, classroom space, believe it or not. Uh, the former superintendent and I, Jim O'Neill, uh, we, we went to a number of places here in Chatham, in Madison. Uh, we couldn't really identify a place that would, would suit our needs and uh, that was cost effective because the township is a terrific host for us. Um, so we have done that. In terms of computer labs, there's no question that we have, um, right now we have more than 4,000 devices, I believe is the last count, uh, dispersed throughout the district. Uh, that's how we're going to uh, you know, administer statewide testing this year. Uh, but in certain uh, disciplines, computer science, uh, design and technology, robotics, uh, there are pretty significant programs that you have to run on machines that can handle uh, a lot of memory and uh, you know and other characteristics that I'm not well versed in. So that's why we do need computer labs in our buildings here at the high school and at the middle school in particular. When students are are becoming more sophisticated with the programming, they can they can use. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, to mention those couple of points. So I would hate for uh, I would hate for people to maybe shut down and be closed-minded just because of what something is called, whether it's called a computer lab or a performing arts center. I think the more, again, we understand 
the great contribution it would be making to our students across the board academically, hopefully the more easier it would be to support this referendum. Thank you. Libby Hilton Rev, 37 Weston Avenue. Um, can you hear me better? I'd like to thank the board uh, for holding these special referendum meetings, and I just have a few brief comments on procedure. First, the board said at its last meeting that if the base budget um, doesn't pass, the rest of the questions wouldn't pass either. According to the NJSBA, this is not the case. If the base budget fails, the votes on questions that follow stand as is. They're not interdependent, so there's no procedural reason that the board can't break the referendum out into as many questions as it wants. So I'd like to say again that I feel the board should allow each item on the referendum to stand on its own merit, be listed separately, and let the voters decide. Second, the board stated in its FAQs that if the referendum were to fail, they would possibly di divert funds from the operating budget. This is in direct conflict with NJSBA policy, which says, if voters reject a second question, the school board cannot transfer funds from within the budget to retain the program. Operating budget dollars cannot be used to fund any referendum projects if they fail. They're separate questions on the ballot. I think we all agree that both of the auditoriums are in disrepair and need to be fixed. I'm not sure why, over 40 and 60 years, we haven't made better use of our maintenance dollars and allowed these facilities to deteriorate to this level. However, building a $10 million performing arts center at CMS that doesn't even house all of the students when we could renovate the current auditorium for three to $4 million, make it ADA compliant, and even a state-of-the-art facility doesn't seem to make much fiscal sense. Thank you. I think um, you're mistaken. My last comment, you slightly misquoted. The base budget and the second and third and fourth questions are independent of each other. My position was on the, when you add multiple second questions, they are linear. Each is dependent on the previous. So if the, you know, first of the second questions fails, the second and third question will not be implemented. And so the base budget is on its own. That would be con considered the first question. And every question after that, second, third, fourth question. The other comment is the... Can I just follow up on that? Um, question number one on the ballot is always the base budget. Right? That's the base budget. Okay. You can have question two, three, four, five, as many as you want. So with this $25 million referendum, if we wanted to break it out for the fields, the, uh, the PAC Center, high school auditorium, uh, right. renovations, if you put the fields they first, they be each separate questions. Is that correct? Let, let me uh, let me just uh, chime in really quickly. There's a distinction between a referendum mm -hmm. and a second question. Okay. So the past two years in our district, we asked a base budget question and then second questions, additional questions. Right. Those questions, uh, the way we've structured them the last two years, automatically raise the tax levy permanently. So. Uh, if it was to add additional school counseling, for example, just as, as one of our second questions, or to uh, expand our STEM programs. Yeah, last, um, uh, there were two, um, counseling and security. Right? That was two years ago. Right. Last year we had the one on STEM. Right. So those are, those are what are considered second questions, and they, they immediately are paid for in their entirety. There's no money borrowed. It's just an automatic uh, raise in the tax levy. A referendum is different than that. It's not considered a second question. It's a, it's separate from the base budget, and it's it's a, it's on its own. And it's essentially asking the voters uh, to borrow money. Can we, you know, go and borrow money um, a, in order to fund long term, and in this case, on a twenty year basis, uh, improvements that we want to make? Okay. So uh, can can the board list each of these items separately, or must it legally be put? As a, as a lump item. I believe the board can do whatever it wants in that regard, but I think the history on this board, certainly it was the case in 2005, was for those questions to be linear, like Ms. Weber said. And so the first question, if it goes down, then there's no, the other questions are moot at that point. 
Right, but it's a, um, that's a matter of opinion rather than procedural. If the board hears enough from the public that they feel it should be broken out, they have the right to do so. Is that correct or not? So just for clarity, putting aside the budget question, mm -hmm. because the referendum could be, it, it is a separate question as, as Dr. Lucissa just pointed out. Right. In that case, if you break out the questions, which you can do, mm -hmm. so let's say question number one, and then you have referendum question one, referendum question two, referendum question three. If question number one fails, regardless of the affirmative vote on two, three, and four, they all fail. It is in that application that the prior question must pass for the referendum to be successful. So if I, if I were to look at the breakout on this chart, right, base budget is question number one. There's six projects. You, when, just so, for clarity, when you say base budget, you're talking about the school question budget? Question number one, the school base yeah, budget. Yeah, you have to separate those. They're mutually exclusive. Right, right. So, so, so question number one, you vote yes or no. Here's our base budget. You're going to, that's it, that's it, that's, that's, that correct. has a 2% cap. Whether that, whether that, whether that passes or not has no impact on the referendum. Correct. Budget. That's correct. right. Okay. Yes. That's so, that's separate. Yep. These six projects on this chart, can they each be listed separately and voted on separately outside of the base budget, outside of question number one? They could, but what I'm saying is in that case, if you break them out to two questions or to six questions, mm -hmm. the questions have to pass in order. Otherwise, if the first, let's just hypothetically say that the, um, the new auditorium is question one. Which auditorium? The, the, new, the new auditorium the at the middle school. Okay. Yep. Let's just say that's question one. Okay. And questions two through six are the rest of the projects. Uh -huh. If question one fails, then regardless of the affirmative vote on questions two through six, the entire referendum fails. You can't pick and choose the questions that you pass. They have to be connected to how you lay out the questions and what order they're placed in. But what do, that, that so you can't you can't turf fields because you don't want to build an auditorium like it, I well uh, I just I gave you the example of what order they're in if you put the turf field first and that passed and the auditorium was the last question and it failed then all the questions ahead of it that passed could but what I'm suggesting to you is that the way the statute and the 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 referendum question presentation is created that they are connected to the so questions prior. If, it, right. if it's... We're going to have to wrap it up, so if you can make this your last follow-up question. I mean, they're linear. Uh, is it, is there, can, it, can they be listed as something besides a referendum? Or are there different rules that would apply if you don't call it no. a referendum? I mean, I know no. you're raising funds, but... No, sorry. No. So, so there is no option to break this out, then. You can't, you, the voters can't decide it's not an optimum that, option. That's what you're saying, right? If it were optimum, we would have chosen that. But we've decided that the optimum option to let the voters decide on the one question is to go with one so question. It cannot be broken out. Am I, is that correct or not? Again, it's linear. So it's not an optimum solution. Because if the first one fails, the rest of the projects are now, no, are now moot. We can't. We need to move on. Can we get the next speaker? We've already, we're at 10 minutes on this. Thanks. Julia Callahan, 53 Talmadge Avenue. I wanted to start by publicly thanking Mr. Heap and the Chatham JCs for funding the broadcast of the Board of Ed meetings through April. Speaking on behalf of full day kindergarten supporters, many of whom have young kids and babies, it can be challenging for us to get out of the house for a rare date night, let alone to Board of Ed meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so we hugely appreciate being able to tune in and see and hear what tra is transpiring in the meetings. I was sick last meeting, and it was great to be able to watch it. Um, so thank you, and I hope that there's a way that we can continue this beyond April. Secondly, as an advocate for full-day kindergarten, oops, sorry. <laughs> Secondly, as an advocate for full-day kindergarten in Chatham, I'm speaking specifically to support for the building of additional elementary school classrooms. While exploring the feasibility of full-day kindergarten in Chatham, we've heard time and time again that classroom space is a real issue across the district, and particularly at the elementary school level. Um, I'm concerned with the reduction of the classroom build that's in the new proposal. I understand that um, it's a net of six classrooms, two additional classrooms at each school, but my feeling is based on my understanding of the overcrowding and the um, 
the space issues at the elementary level, that if we have the ability to build on Southern Boulevard School, that that should be um, included in the referendum as well. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Joyce Martinson from Chatham Borough. Um, I have a lot of a lot to say. I know I only have three minutes, but my my original question was Joyce Martinson from the borough. Um, my original question was um, for the I think it's maybe forty to fifty percent of the residents who no longer have children in the school system or <laughs> never had children. They're they're, they're just non schoolers. Um, how is the board getting um, the information out to these voters? Um, many of these people are, are, are up in age, they're seniors, they might not go on the internet, they might not have email. Um, I think the two papers that handle it are the Independent and the Courier. Um, do they know that it's on TV at night? Are you going to do something like snail mail to these, to, to all of us, to sort of lay out the, the program um, and you know let them know what, what they're going to be voting on? Um, my other concern is um, this: the way you're laying it out on the budget. I, 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 for some reason, I remember years ago the budget didn't pass the first time. I, I was one of the moms years ago that you know. It's a dollar a day, you know. Isn't that? Aren't your children worth it? Now it's a cup of Starbucks, you know. <laughs> of course, our kids are worth it, but not at the price that you guys are looking for. Um, it, it, it didn't. It didn't it fail the first time, and then you sent it back with a, with a little bit of you know uh, tweaking. I mean, in anybody's budget isn't an all or nothing budget. I, I've never heard of that in my whole life. I mean, in business. You start out with a big number, and then you start to whittle it down, and you do you want your needs and your wants. Um, if it's a matter of putting the right question at the first for the first question, obviously you're going to put the you did twelve million dollar question up there. Why don't you start slow? Put the lo low number up first, and put the high number at the bottom, and then we can get all the little ticks off. And at the bottom, we just will decide. I mean, it, it's. And, and with all due respect to the gentleman that talked about the, the Performing Arts Center, you call it the auditorium, you call it the Performing Arts Center, what is it? Is it, you know, is it you're going to market it for the, the, uh, uh, the Performing Arts Center for the people who want it? You're, gonna, you're marketing it the auditorium for the, for the people that don't understand $12 million? Uh, I just, it's, it just, you know, it doesn't seem to be... 15 uh, seconds. Right. You know, it just, it's not, I'm not swallowing it. I'm not going to drink the Kool-Aid. You know, it's just, not, it's not, it's, it's really not right. Um, the, with all due respect to the gentleman who talked about the performing arts, performing arts are not seats in an auditorium. And if you have a 500 or a 1,000, you know, performing you could, arts programs are what you need, not the seats. You got Broadway that has, you know, the seats there from, you know, 1918, you know, you can't even fit in them. Do they change them? No, they just have Time's more up. performances. If you, summarize, if you could summarize. So I just really feel that, number one, everyone in the borough and the township has got to know what they're going to vote on, and you can't rely on the internet or the web. You have to send it out in the mail, list it, and I would really suggest you put the, the, the lowest, you know, uh, project to the highest. Because that's ridiculous. You, you're, you're stacking the deck, and I and I and we know it. Okay. Thank you. I'll just mention quickly: uh, the board does intend to send a, a mailing out to all residents in the community. Um, the failed vote that you referenced, I believe, was in 1998, uh, and uh, I think it was for 39 million dollars. And then the board came back the following year in 1999. Uh, the board at the time with a scaled down version uh, that uh, resulted in, a, I think, a $25 million, if I'm not mistaken, uh, referendum. Uh, but at the same time, that one of the reasons we're building behind the high school now uh, is that we didn't you know, get enough classrooms out of that uh, original uh, referendum. 
Brian McAuliffe, 40 Lum Avenue in the borough. Uh, first up, I want to say amen to the last uh, speaker that we had here. That was uh, right on. She stole my thunder. But um, <clears throat> I have a daughter who is currently uh, a theater major at Fordham at Lincoln Center. And uh, I will tell you that the, the big auditorium they have there is less than what you have right here. Um, they also have a black box theater, which is tiny. And there are plenty of, of small theaters and black box theaters throughout New York City that are thriving. You don't, it's not the space as much as it is the program, which he said something about the program too. Um, we had a budget for two and a half million dollars to renovate this auditorium, as I figure. And I know that Summit res uh, redid theirs for a million and a half. I really don't understand the reason that we should have some other monstrosity built out in front of here. It's not necessary. It's not about the place that you're doing it. It's what's being taught. It's what's the experience. I've actually been involved in an awful lot of summer theater in smaller auditoriums than this, and they were high school kids, and they had a great time, and they learned an awful lot about it, and that was just in a couple of weeks in the summer. Um, the referendum, this, the, the, I, I also have a hard time believing that if you vote, if you've killed number one, you're killing it. I, you're all adults, you've got to figure out a way to be able to say, this is question one, this thing's a separate question, this thing's a separate question, you can vote for each one, the ones you want. You can pick and choose. This is America. It's not Russia. And if you really want to make this big $12 million thing to see if everybody wants to swallow this, I'd really question who actually put this forth and who's behind it. But if you really want somebody to swallow that, uh, then put it at the bottom so that if all of the others get approved, which by the way, one of them is the auditorium, then that last thing can get killed and nobody worries about it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Stuart Carr at 3 Crestwood Drive in Chatham. First, a couple of procedural items. Uh, kudos to Mr. Belding again, reiterating what everybody has said. And I want to thank the board for having these extra sessions, particularly Mr. Nonemacher and Mr. Uh, uh, Connors for taking a run at that and keeping people informed that uh, we do want to have these sessions. Thank you, too, for uh, uh, piping up on that. Uh, I would propose uh, that the board reconsider the one question and make it into three questions. Hopefully, I can get uh, kind of a hybrid from what everybody's speaking about here. We understand that academics are the most important. I would argue that the performing arts, athlete notwithstanding, performing arts are second most important, and athletics are third most important, all of which are important. So I'd argue that we have a three-tier referendum, and I think we can get to this thing about if question number one blows up, then everything is gone. The first piece would be all of the things that we're doing with the classrooms and renovations, i.e. Cougar Field, renovate this facility, renovate Chatham Middle School, uh, stay over at um, uh, 58 Myersville Road. That would be question one, whatever that amount is. Then question two would be the incremental cost for the Chatham Middle School auditorium new construction. So in other words, it's like three million to rehab it, 10 million to build a new one, so seven million incremental. Then question number three would be the turf increment in the front here, or in the back of the uh, Chatham High School. So that's where we're going from academics to performing arts to athletics, okay? I respect the board saying that, listen, we're kind of the fiduciaries for the community. We understand that a single question makes a lot of sense. While I respect that, I respectfully disagree with it. I think the taxpayers are not stupid. I think if you make the case appropriately, you can get the three questions and the people will respond appropriately. If they vote no, then they're the people who are paying for the uh, different pieces and presumably they should be heard. And unlike the referendum or the non-referendum we had a couple of years ago with the parking lot back here, remember a lot of folks were against the parking lot but were pro the operating budget. Everybody basically swallowed and said let's vote for the budget, including me, even though we were uh, uh, totally against the parking lot scenario. There, you had no excuse or had no ability to break out the piece because it was the operating budget. Here you do. So I think on principle, we should have three questions. Again, figure out how to do that, but go from academic to performing arts to uh, athletics. And with respect to the, and again, I happen to think that that 1,100 seat stadium or whatever it is makes sense more so than the 975, because um, I do think that that make, but that's just my opinion there. So I would say one way or the other, have the three. The only thing I am against, again, is the back uh, turf. I think the extra million and a half dollars or whatever it costs for the turf could be redeployed into the taxpayer pocket or redeployed into the, either the bigger art center or back into direct academics. So I think, again, 
Uh, we can get a good grass field, do it the right way. I had an unscientific poll here about 30 schools all in Morris, uh, Essex, and Hudson counties. Montville High School and I think Randolph are the only ones that have a turf baseball field. So I think in terms of having extra turf, that's probably a little bit into the uh, luxury as opposed to the need to. For baseball folks, and again, I'm a baseball person long term, so I'm kind of speaking against myself. If you need the help in the early spring, you can go to Cougar Field, you can go to Lum Field and really get your infield in earlier in the year. And if we do it right in the back, you can get substantial drainage. Grass Field is terrific for astral aesthetics. And I think it's also terrific for purposes of playing ball. Thank you, so, Mr. again, Farr. thank you for your time. And, again, I do appreciate these extra uh, sessions. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Hi. Um, Patricia Northrup, Chatham Borough. Um, my son, uh, Nicholas, will be in kindergarten in a, in a couple of years. So I'm looking forward to him hopefully going through um, all levels of the Chatham schools. Um, and thanks to the board for allowing all these opportunities for public comment. It's been a terrific uh, lesson in, in local civics for um, a relatively new resident. Um, I wanted to uh, echo a lot of what was just said by the last couple speakers in terms of um, the logistics of the referendum. Um, I, I do hope that as a result of going through Chatham schools, my son will be <coughs> active in sports, active in the arts, but most importantly, first and foremost, an extremely well-educated individual when he graduates. Um, so I agree with the last speaker. The emphasis needs to be first and foremost on the investments in academic space. Um, obviously, if the fields and athletic facilities and the arts facilities, the auditorium, also need upgrading and maintenance, and that's overdue. I think those should be taken care of as well. Um, I think it is a little bit of a political trick to put um, in a much more expensive investment in something that is uh, not uh, primarily going for academics into the same uh, referendum as these other things. Um, for, for the same reasons that have already been expressed. I think if, if it is indeed true, and like others, I find it hard to believe um, that this linear progression must be followed, then I think it's imperative on the board to make sure its priorities are in the right order for that, um, for that sequence. So I mean, in favor of academic space, the, the maximum, not the pared back proposal. In fact, I would support that we go back to the um, more robust proposal for expanding the elementary schools. Um, and, and put that, that I'll just say my, my personal view, unneeded auditorium last. It's the, it's the most expensive item and the one that seems to have the least support. I'd also like to point out that after one of the prior meetings, um, one of the reporters, uh, one of the newspapers reporting on this pointed out that despite some other issues being contentious, there was no opposition voice to the expansion of the academic space. And that seems to be a theme here. So I'd, I'd urge the board to be receptive to that. Um, finally, while there's the pragmatic issue of how to get the most things passed that will benefit the most students and how to sequence this, there's also a larger, for me, philosophical issue here in terms of where the priorities are. Um, the Chatham schools are, of course, top ranked. And we're all very proud of that. We should and are. Uh, should be and are very proud of our students, our, our teachers, and the parents who make that happen. Um, but at the same time, I think we need to remind ourselves when we're deciding where to put our very, very limited tax dollars uh, that New Jersey is, is not at the top of nationally ranked schools, but even though the Chatham schools are excellent. And internationally, we remain at best in the middle of the pack among developed nations, and our rankings are going down rather than up. So when I think about who my son is going to be competing with when he graduates. If you could summarize. Sure. When I think about who my son will be competing with you know, further down the road, I, I don't think a new auditorium, whatever name it's going by, is going to make a difference in where, where he ends up. Um, so I, I encourage the board to stay focused on the academics and maintaining existing facilities rather than investing in something that we don't need. Thank you. Hi, Nicole Chase, 10 Edgewood Road in Chatham uh, Borough. Um, I'm here to um, show my support for the referendum in its entirety. And I'd like to thank the board because um, I've lived here for 15 years. And there hasn't been a year that's gone by that I haven't been um, impressed by the board and their time commitment and their fiscal responsibility. I think that you've taken us through some very difficult fiscal years over the last 15 years, including about um, six years ago, I was uh, president of Washington Avenue PTO. And the Board of Ed lost um, 
the board, no, the board of uh, Chat, yeah, the board of Ed in Chatham lost 80 percent of its state aid funding, and somehow the board managed to pull it together and still um, present, you know, a great educational opportunity with all of that funding gone from the state. So um, I believe you. I think that when you show the, the the PowerPoint presentation as to why this is the best time to try to make these improvements in Chatham, I think that you've earned my um, You've earned my approval. Um, and I'd like to take one step further and just say in particular about the auditorium. I'd like to paint a picture over the last 15 years of what I've gone through in the Chatham public school system. Um, I moved here right before I started my family. I've been through all, all the schools now. I've been through Washington, Lafayette, middle school, and I, we just started at the high school. And I think when you have my perspective and you know, maybe um, if you're not in the public school system yet, you don't realize it, and maybe when you're out of the public school system, you don't realize it yet. So I'd just like to tell you very briefly my experience. Um, when I started here with toddlers, I remember walking into this space for some kind of a meeting and being disappointed that it was aged and it just wasn't inspiring at all as a space. And I thought, wow, I heard so much about the Chatham School District, and this is the auditorium, this is it. Then we went through... Um, Washington Avenue School, they had a musical performance where the children um, practiced for seven months and were only allowed to invite two guests because there was no space for them to perform their show. We get to Lafayette and the parents are lined up and down the fire, fire escape stairs um, to watch concerts because there's no room to accommodate the growing student population. Then we get to the middle school and they have to separate the, um, the band with the orchestra concerts because there's not enough space to, for everybody to enjoy their performances. You have um, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders who are so proud to have solos, and you can't hear their solos because the sound system doesn't work. Then, um, you know, we get here, and there's duct tape holding seats together. You can't fit, you can't accommodate the growing population of this town. And I'm very proud that we have such a high ranking academically. And um, I know academics is first, but I consider an auditorium um, kind of like a microcosm of the, whole, of the whole town, the whole school. It's where people come together. It accommodates grades K summarize. through 12. Am I out of time? No, no. You, I was just going to oh. say if you could summarize. That's it. I, I just think an auditorium accommodates grades, three to, grades K through 12 and beyond. Um, it's for participants as well as performers, as well as for speakers that come from out of town. And I trust your judgment that this is the time to keep up with our, um, the quality of education that we're used to. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chase. Hi, I'm Amanda Fema, and I live at 233 Shunpike Road in the township. Um, I've been at many of these meetings, uh, and I'm a representative from the Full Day Kindergarten Group. I have also joined the Board of Education Counts uh, because I feel so strongly about many of the issues that are part of this referendum and voting, which is why I would like for everyone to appreciate the complexities of getting people to vote on all of these issues if we do break them out when many of our population doesn't even come out to vote the likelihood of this referendum passing and us seeing any of these programs that we are in favor of passing is a very very low if we break these questions out I know it's hard enough to get people to the polls. I often go with my five-year-old and three-year-old. If I have to vote on six questions, regardless of my intent, I may screw it up because one of them is screaming in the middle of the booth. So if we, and people can say, come on, but I also think one of the things that we as a community need to recognize through all of our comments is we are a community. We are not parents of little kids versus seniors. I am not a parent of a full day kindergartner versus someone on the turf fields. We all want what's best for our children and we should all vote for what is best in the community. And I think you as the board have done a good job being prudent and have looked to other communities because one of the things that is looked to is all types of facilities. The first impressions that parents have when they go tour a school is what it looks like aside from rankings. And our facilities coming into this room, the many times, one of the first times I came in here was to hear a presentation by Dr. Lasuza 
his microphone was failing and the technology was failing. And it, it, we need to do better for our kids, uh, regardless of whether they're performing arts students, to have facilities that are up to par. I also would say that this referendum is, in fact, looking out for seniors because it is protecting home values. Because many of the surrounding schools have facilities that may surpass those of ours, whether it's fields, whether it's an auditorium, whether it's full day kindergarten, whether it's adequate class size. We need to do what our peers are doing. And when we have not made many of these repairs for many years, we need to keep up. Lastly, in the interest of full day kindergarten and also of a child who I've recently gone through the schools, I would strongly ask for you to reconsider adding the classrooms on Southern Boulevard. Though it may not appear that we need that space today, we have been wrong from a demographic standpoint and a decline in the past. And as I walk through schools and continue to see children reading in the hallway and a newly entering kindergarten saying she does not want to learn to read in the hallway, we need to ensure that our children are being taught, that our children are being taught in classrooms. And if we have the opportunity to build those, whether it's for full day kindergarten, special ed services, reducing class sizes, we need to make sure that we include it in this referendum because we will not have another chance for a very, very long time. Thank you. Thank you. Donna Kelly Charles, Chatham Borough. Um, I'd like to thank you for um, videotaping and broadcasting these meetings. Um, it, is a great asset to those that can't make it out um, for this. But I would also request that you put it um, in the budget so that you can continue taping these meetings. The borough council in the um, meetings are on the same night as your school board meetings. Um, set six of the 11 scheduled School board meetings are on the same night as the borough council meetings. So it is really important to give voters the opportunity to watch both these meetings or decide which one they want to attend and which one they want to watch from home. So I implore you to add that to in the school budget, please. Um, there's been talk that there's bonds that are being paid off, and so we will, uh, we will have extra money from that. Why is that not included in and in taken off this bottom line? Uh, as of tonight, you got that, the, the possible referendum down to 21932 um, Why is that not taken off of there as well and bring it down even more? Um, and... I would also like to point out that there are other dates that referendums can be presented to the voters. So perhaps we should not rush into this um, and present it at another time. I do realize that that would, that would cost money to run a special election, but it might be worth it in the long run. And there's also a lot of questions about, uh, or it seems to be a selling point that you need to make these ADA compliant. Um, I was just wondering what some of those compliances were. I was noticing there already is a curb cut. You can wheel a wheelchair up here. There's no stairs. I believe I'm standing on a wheelchair um, accessible spot where you've already taken the chair out. So. Um, this auditorium seems like it already is ADA compliant. And I'm a big advocate for making things ADA compliant, but it seems like it's a big selling point that doesn't really hold true. We already are ADA compliant. Um, and just, I also would like to see the referendums, the questions separated so that we can vote on um, what we feel is important in important use of our tax dollars. Thank you. That are coming off are actually factored into the numbers that we presented tonight. So whereas we are lopping off a bond from 1995, 
in the amount of $5 million. And then we're replacing that with a referendum of a net um, 21 million, whatever the number is, $22 million. So the figure is basically, when all is said and done, a net impact of 17 million, correct, Pete? Because what we're doing is, is we're not, whereas we are not reducing the amount of taxes by $5 million, which would account for the referendum, the piece of the referendum from 1995 that's coming off, and then net replacing it with this referendum. If that makes sense. Just to clarify, the bond that is coming mature, when it matures, would be approximately the same time that the new bonds would be added. So there is a, uh, a net effect. So the net effect of the bond that comes off has been offset against the cost of the new bond. So in, instead of asking us to approve almost $22 million, you can take $5 million off of that because... So in, in actuality, then we are the no, 22 what, plus Even five? as a matter of fact, we actually have to ask for the 24988000 even though the net tax impact is going to be less than $22 million. So whereas we have to ask for that figure, the net figure, the actual figure in terms of your tax impact is um, once you net out debt relief from the state. Okay, so, but actually you're really spending that $5 million more than what you have to ask for because it's a, that's a credit that will be there. What are you going to do with that money? No, it's, um, I like to sit down with you with a piece of paper and I'll walk you through it. It's probably a little bit easier than trying to do it verbally. I think I a lot of people what, would like to know rather than just me. What, ha what happens is if you want to try to put it in simple terms, sure. if you have an existing mortgage on your house that has a 20-year loan, mm -hmm. you then, when you're in year 19, you take a home equity loan. Your mortgage becomes paid off in year one of your home equity loan but you continue to pay your home equity loan. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when the, when the taxpayers approve a bond referendum, they agree to pay the debt of the referendum for the term, in this case, 20 years. So the township and the borough, exclusive of the school budget, continues to fund the amount due on the referendum. What will happen when the 1995 bond matures, the township and borough will need less money to pay that debt. It, however, will, if the taxpayers approve, have to fund the new debt. So basically, that comes out of the taxpayer. If for some ungodly reason, the district decided to close its doors, the township and the borough would still have to pay the referendum debt. The referendum debt, once it's passed, continues on until the term of the bonds are finalized. So in essence, you are adding $5 million to this $22 million figure. No, we are not. The figure as presented is $24.8 million, not including the debt service. That is the amount that will be requested in bonding. Due to the state's funding, the net figure is approximately $22 million with the, I'll call it $3 million in debt funding. That's the amount of new bonds that will be outstanding for the borough and the and the township. The tax, the tax impact gets, the tax impact of the new bonds gets slightly offset and lowered because the township of the maturing bond and the town can direct, the towns can direct that funding towards the new bond or towards the, the new debt. If you, I mean, if you have one more, but I just want to get, make sure I get to all the speakers because we're going to run out of time tonight. I just want to make sure we get to everybody at least once. So if you've, if you've already spoken, can you give everybody else an opportunity to speak first and before you loop? We don't really take second. One, one second. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, sure. So the question was asked about the ADA improvements. And so some of the things that you see in the existing auditorium here at the high school were done based on efforts to accommodate um, people with disabilities and were done in somewhat makeshift ways. Things that would be addressed as part of the renovation improvements are things that are more compliant that are more that can be done when you do a more holistic renovation. So for example, you only have two spots to accommodate wheelchairs proportionally based on the number of seats in the auditorium. That's really not the correct relationship and, and proportion 
for how many should be here. None of the chairs on the aisles have adjustable arms so that they're adaptable. So if someone comes in a wheelchair but can transfer into a regular seat, there's no accommodation for that. So some of those kinds of accommodations would be undertaken when you do a more holistic renovation while um, you can't really do those if you're not. So I trust that answer. Well, those renovations have to be done pursuant to a regulation, a federal regulation that didn't exist, oh. I'm sorry, that didn't <laughs> exist when this building was constructed. Oh, well, certainly, yeah. I mean, the barrier-free requirements, when, when the buildings were originally constructed, had very different code requirements, and the barrier-free requirements have come over time, and certainly from learning lessons and from advocacy groups and things like that, that whole barrier-free and the, the federal guidelines that are in place have certainly changed. Right, and these are not regulations that you can ignore. They're imposed upon you. Oh, that's correct. There you go. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Laura Fitzgerald, uh, 40 Mountain View Road. I'd like to thank the board for all your hard work um, in considering everyone in the community. Um, my special interest is uh, the elementary schools. I think I would like you to reconsider the addition at Southern Boulevard. I have two young daughters that, well, one would be in kindergarten this year. Uh, the other one may be in kindergarten, will definitely be in kindergarten in two years, so it might not benefit her. But, um, you know, I'm a, I'm, I've been a teacher for 15 years in another district. I think the state's going in the wrong direction with all this testing. Chatham has been fine without full day kindergarten. Um, but I really do think you should consider the parents in this district that do have to work full time, both parents, and the fact that their child has to be bused somewhere else if they need full, full day kindergarten, which is now the current situation. So uh, really, please reconsider the addition at Southern Boulevard so that even if it's not full day kindergarten for the whole district, the parents that do need it may have their child in one building and not have to send them somewhere else for kindergarten because it's just not an option here. Um, you know, if I was, I would love to be, you know, I'd love to have my child in half day kindergarten and be at home, but a reality for many residents is that both parents have to work and, and, and they do need that option for their children. Thank you. Thank you. And, ju and just to clarify, the referendum, we're, we're in full day kindergarten, the program is not part of the referendum. I, I understand okay. that, but I just... I, I, I just know, want to make sure... Okay. It, I know that, that Madison uh, schools, they don't have full day kindergarten either, but they at least have a wraparound program for the children who need it in one building, and they don't... The children don't have to be bused anywhere, oh, where thank they, you. as they do here. I just wanted to be clear, that's not... The, offering full day kindergarten is not part of this referendum. Thank you. This is Dave Weaving, Crestwood Drive. Um, first, I would like to uh, thank the board for going back and looking at things from the last meeting to reduce the gross dollars by about 10%. We do appreciate that. Having said that, I do have a couple of specific questions about the program and then also comment. Uh, one, would like to know what the contingency percentage is on the, on the remaining bill to make sure that you didn't get there by just taking the contingency out of the original 28 million. I've seen projects do that before. And then when they go over, ooh, what a surprise. Two, uh, with the expansion at the at the uh, elementary schools, do we have the sufficient space at Lafayette, Lafayette Avenue, uh, the middle school and the high school then for when those expanded classes come through? Because I'd like to know just if there's a total cost of ownership item uh, associated with that. And uh, my third question is, do we really need two full-size auditoriums or one really big good auditorium? Because you know most of the time spaces like these are not occupied the vast majority of the time, even when you have productions and things like that going. My final point is I'd like to just echo a couple of points that were made earlier. Uh, I believe the statement was made that the board made the decision to put this all together in one referendum. We really should be able to vote on each line item individually because people do have different viewpoints on what's important. Thank you. And, and if I could just ask, because I've heard four different orders, what would your, be your preference? Each group has a special interest. so. I've well, heard four I, different ones tonight. I, I would tell you I'd probably go in um, lowest dollar order because if the if the rules are written such that you know the first time you fail one, it all goes. The, everything after it goes, I definitely start smallest dollar first. So dollar, not program or act, or just dollar. I, I would go dollar because it's probably the most mm -hmm. equitable way to give everybody an opportunity to vote because you know I might vote for I might suggest uh, the academic side. Some people might be for the athletic. Well, you've heard all the yeah. opinions. You've heard four yeah. different orders already. 
And yeah, I'm sure no, there's about 20,000 20, more outside. And, and let's face it, with six items to vote on, uh, there's probably 30 permutations. That's why I just go lowest dollar high ties. Okay, very good. Mr. Ruth? I'll just answer very quickly. Uh, we do think we have space at Lafayette and the middle school and the high school now once this new addition is complete to handle the uh, classes that are moving through the district. Um, as some folks have referenced already, we have a demographic projection that our enrollment will begin to decline. We haven't seen that come to fruition yet, but that's uh, kind of been the story in this district. Um, I, I do think we need two auditoriums. I don't think the middle school could function well without a space where they can gather uh, as a school, uh, nor could the high school or Lafayette. Um, and so I, I do think two auditorium spaces are better than one and necessary. Uh, Mr. Ruth? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan Ruth, 82 Fairview, Chatham Township. The referendum addresses many issues having to do with the overcrowded and outdated facilities in our school district. I would like to address three issues. Number one, our K-3 buildings, in spite of several expansions and a, re a recent enrollment decline, continue to be barely adequate for current classes and are, remain unable to accommodate the potential for full-day kindergarten desired by many. We should build out the maximum K-3 space which can reasonably be economically constructed, including Southern Boulevard School, in addition to plans to expand Melton Avenue School and Washington Avenue School. One should not be misled by demographic forecasts based on Chatham birth rates to project K-3 to enrollment, since many families migrate into the district after their children are born, drawn by the excellent schools here. Point number two. Our middle school has been forced to make compromises over the years due to growing populations and limited space. Eliminating shop classes, computer and STEM labs, and cramming a growing population into an undersized and outdated auditorium, which is out of compliance with current Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA regulations. The referendum adds back space, some of this space, by replacing the existing auditorium with classrooms and STEM workspaces and provides the opportunity to move district administration from a remote location to one integrated with the school. A new, larger ADA compliant auditorium will be constructed at the middle school as part of this design. This auditorium can also be used by the high school and Lafayette school performances and assemblies too large to fit in the existing high school auditorium which will undergo much needed major refurbishment, including ADA compliant facilities. Please size the auditorium to fit our population with some room for growth and don't make compromises now that we'll regret later. Point number three, our school district has long been known for a balanced program where 40% of students participate in athletics and 40% in the arts. We should not address this balanced program with a piecemeal referendum offering a menu of options to be voted upon by those favoring one discipline over another. Rather, the Board of Education should maintain the plan to vote on the referendum as an integrated package serving all student populations as well as citizens of all ages with issues addressed by incorporating ADA compliant features at athletic fields and in performance spaces. In summary, please expand all K-3 buildings, including Southern Boulevard School, as much as economically possible. Provide the facilities needed to expand the middle school, including a new auditorium of appropriate size for school assemblies and performances, including potential for growth. And keep the referendum to one integrated ballot question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. I would like to just mention one thing since it's come up a couple of times. The AD compliant features uh, are something that does not just benefit adult audiences that come uh, to see shows. We have a more diverse student population than we've ever had in the district, and it's not uncommon to have either at Lafayette, the middle school, or the high school, multiple students who have special needs, uh, more than two students, uh, which is what we can accommodate here. Um, who need some of the uh, the accommodations that um, 
Greg Somgen, our architect, uh, noted before. So from my perspective as superintendent, the ADA uh, accommodations and upgrades uh, are actually more important for the student body than the public audiences that come to see uh, shows in the district. Hi. I'm uh, May Hacking from the township. I wanted to start off just by um, saying thank you, as many others have said, to the Board of Education um, for having attended many of these meetings in the past. You've really opened my eyes to the complexity um, that's involved in your jobs and in running this district that benefits my child, my children, in their education in this town. Um, when we see the materials in a newspaper or somehow rehashed and regurgitated in other um, forums, uh, that complexity doesn't always come through. So I trust that you guys have spent a lot of time and a lot of energy thinking <clears throat> through this and the many um, different options that are out there. And I, I appreciate the time and the effort that you've put into it. Um, in having sat through these meetings, I keep going back to one particular sentiment that, Mr. Belding, you made several meetings ago uh, when the board was stating their opinion. Each of you went down the row about why we should do this as a single question. And the comment that you made that has stuck with me through this whole process is that if everyone has to pay, everyone should get something. And I really believe that. Um, I know I have my own personal opinions about, as you said, Ms. Weber, what's important here, your priorities, one, two, and three, and four. And I think that's part of what makes this community rich and diverse and such a wonderful place to live. Because we all have different opinions, we all have different values, but at the end of the day, this community serves us all. Um, our children's education and our children's experience here is a holistic one, as, as Alan was mentioning. It's the academics, it's the extracurriculars, it's the athletics. I think if we're all going to have to pay for this referendum, we really should acknowledge that holistic experience that's, that makes our children's experience so rich here in Chatham. Um, I want to just make sure that I express my opinion that this referendum should be addressed as a single question. That to pick and choose is to imply, is to, it's to force one's, own, one's priorities on other people's children. And I think we're a community, we should stand as a community, we should support that holistic experience for our children. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Bill Heap, Hillside Avenue in the uh, borough. Uh, thanks to all the board for coming out and uh, listening to all of us. I know you'd rather be doing something else. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, New Jersey is a fiscal basket case, and I think I'm being charitable when I say that. We're not responsible for that, by the way. And I get that. You, you won't be taken out and shot. For All right. Uh, but everybody knows the headlines. Uh, Atlantic City has fallen off a cliff. Um, the financial services industry is not going to provide the juice that it once was, especially in this neighborhood. We have a General Motors sized pension problem. The state is losing population. Uh, Mr. Christie is running for president, so he had wildly optimistic projections, but the uh, tax receipts were way under uh, what the expectations were. Uh, Mercedes just got up and blew out of town and took a thousand jobs with them. Uh, we are going to be affected by that somehow. Stephen Sweeney has stated that the, the uh, state is not going to be in a position to help municipalities with their budgets. So my question is this, what kind of level of confidence do you have that we will be getting any money toward this referendum on a kind of a one to 10 uh, scale, 10 being perfectly confident and one no money at all? Can, can, can you give us some idea of what that might be? Money from, I'm sorry. Money from the, so, there, so, there's no, money from forthcoming from the okay. state. Isn't You're talking there? about the state, the, the, the state debt service aid. Well, as part of the referendum, are, yeah, so, aren't we? Yep. So, so, so just to clarify the way debt service aid works, you're not getting a cash check. What the state is committing to is paying your principal and interest on the debt that you're borrowing in the amount that they've committed in their final eligible cost letter over the period that you're borrowing the money. 
So um, I wish I could tell you whether or not they're going to make this commitment for eternity to every district that ever has borrowed money. Uh, I think historically they've lived up to their obligations because debt service aid has been in place throughout this state for decades. And so um, I am not a lawyer or an expert with the debt service aid in the state. My profession is architecture. But I can tell you that based on the districts with whom we have interacted, that they have the debt service aid um, payments have been made. If you notice, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with the process, in 2000, there was a grant process that was introduced. And many districts pursued a grant whereby the state physically gave you a check for your share, and the district took on their local contribution through either capital, capital reserve, operational budget, or borrowing money through a long-term debt. Debt service aid is different. It's not a cash check up front. They're committing to paying back principal and interest over the life of the bond. And to the best of my knowledge, and again, I can't speak to it more than just based on the experiences I have with some other districts, to the best of my knowledge, the state has lived up to um, the obligations of debt service aid. And again, making adjustments uh, along the way, I'm sure, as it relates to whatever discussions they have with districts about uh, money and, and other things. But to the best of my knowledge. That mind, amount can vary, though, depending on how much they have. I, I'm sure it could. I'm sure it could. But I, 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 you know, I'm not because it the, seems to me that Chatham is going to be last on anybody's list to get any kind of aid uh, going forward. It, it's just the, the fiscal the fiscal situation in the state is, is pretty drastic. I think this is a pretty well-read community, and most people would be shocked to find out that New Jersey has the lowest store, the second lowest bond rating in the country. Only Illinois is less. So my point is that that um, maybe there's money coming and maybe there's not. I'm just kind of trying to get a feel whether you think that uh, there will be some forthcoming or not. I think it's a fair concern, and from what I've seen, payments have been made. Okay. I, I agree. It's a fair point, Mr. Heap. I just mentioned, too, I know Ms. Chase made mention this. We lost 87% of our aid the, the, the first year Governor Christie was in office. And there isn't an expectation on our end that we're ever going to get back to the level that we were at in 2010. We're so in some own. ways, we, we've, we've tried to pursue through another state program called ROD Grants, uh, where we get 40% of certain projects funded by the state, essentially. Um, in some ways, this is almost a sure bet, albeit not 100% sure, uh, that we will get some sort of assistance from the state since we're not getting any assistance in the regular school aid formula. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heap. If, you, if you're going to speak, if you haven't spoken yet, if you could get up and get in line because we're running out of time. We've got about 10 minutes and I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to speak. Sorry. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Jenkinson. I'm in the Green Village section of the township for the last 15 years. And I, I agree with everything that's been said. Thank you very much for the board for everything you've done. I do have a couple of questions. One is to deal with the, the proposed elementary school classroom additions. What exactly will those rooms be used for? I've been at Washington Avenue School. I know they don't have a music room. They sit on the stage and they have music class and the curtains need to be closed sometimes when the multi-purpose room is used. It gets very hot, it's uncomfortable, it's very short space. But that's one of the, I can see the crowding at Washington Avenue is very bad. So that's why I'm curious as to what these classrooms will be used for exactly. Because everyone wants to hear full day kindergarten. Well, I think there's bigger issues right now than full day kindergarten at this point when the children are in hallways and then on on stages to do music classes. The other question I have here is, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that some cost benefit studies have been done for all these six projects. Will that information be made available to the public, whether it is an individual one referendum question or if it's six? That information should be made available to everyone so they can make educated decisions with this vote. And the last question I have is, will there be an additional meeting or meetings to discuss this in further detail? February 28th is the next meeting. Thank you. It's a Saturday morning. I think Rich wanted it at 5.30 AM. Is that correct, Mr. Connor? <laughs> <laughs> is it at 8? bring donuts. 8 o'clock? 
9. 9 a.m. at uh, February 28th in the middle school auditorium? Yes. Middle school auditorium. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lasusa, could you respond to the curriculum question? Yes. Yeah, so I'll, uh, the caveat here, of course, is that uh, if the referendum were approved, there would still be probably two years before uh, the classrooms were operational. In other words, they wouldn't be ready for this coming September. It would at best be the September after that. Um, at Washington Avenue right now, basic skills instruction space would probably be at the top of the list. Um, I wouldn't want to speak for the principal, Mary Quigley. Uh, she would, you know, perhaps have a different order of needs than I would. You've identified that, you know, our music is packed into the all-purpose room right now. Uh, we also have ESL classes that are taking place in less than optimal spaces. So uh, those kinds of programs, if we had classrooms, uh, you know, tomorrow, we would be using those sorts of programs. Those we would be moving those kinds of programs into those classrooms. Okay. Thank you. And what about uh, cost-benefit studies to be av made available? We, we have put up a, um, a web page on the district website that's dedicated to all of the documents and files that we have regarding the referendum. There is some of that up there now, and we continue to add to it as we make further progress uh, as, and move forward. Okay, thank you. And just to clarify, the February 28th, 9 o'clock, was 9 a.m. It was intentionally done on, on a morning. It's a Saturday morning. Yeah, good evening. I'm Moulin, 131 Southern Boulevard. Uh, thank you, all of you, for all the work you're doing for on behalf of our kids. Thank you, Mr. Belden, for all the service. Uh, I have three uh, comments. Uh, I, uh, I'm extremely excited by the uh, quality of the arts program we have here. And... Uh, Knowing that only 40% of our kids have access to it, I would be the first advocate to make sure that all of our kids uh, have access to it and, and do it indeed and participate in the program. So uh, anything that can extend that opportunity for the kids and make sure we can attract the majority of our kids to have exposure to those wonderful experiences and many of what the other speakers advocating for the theater, uh, for the new uh, performance Arts Center have uh, mentioned are, are completely true. Uh, I'll do my best to get my kids also involved, and uh, that would be wonderful. However, what provides those experiences is not the building. It's the teacher, it's the program, it's the curriculum. Uh, to, the, uh, to that point, uh, we have observed that in the last program of study, there is an addition of a half-year class for theater. That's wonderful. And I think that's really what, from my perspective, we should be emphasizing. My kids get involved, or any of our kids get involved, whether they uh, perform in front of 700 people or 975 people, I don't think their own learning experience is going to be any different. So by all means, keep, maintain, develop our arts program, uh, but I question whether it's the investment in the buildings that will make that experience uh, uh, the most valuable. My second point is for the uh, format of the referendum. Uh, two years ago, uh, we had discussions about a few items, uh, additional counselors, uh, uh, language teachers, uh, that were put forth to the public. And the discussion was, well, should it be part of the budget or should it be put as additional questions? And there is some unanimous consensus that, well, let the people choose. Make it additional questions, and if they want it, they'll pay for it. And I think that's pe people understand, and uh, uh, it makes a lot of sense. It happened that people chose to pay for those, and you know we're taking about the cost and the benefits of that. Uh, last year, same thing. There were people advocating for increased in STEM investment, and the board position was, we, can, we won't put it on the base budget, we'll put it as an additional question, and let the people choose. Go and advocate and educate. I think the, this is no different. This referendum should, as much as the legalities allow, allow the people, yes, to pick and choose. Uh, what they think is uh, the most appropriate. Uh, the school administration does a great job highlighting the needs. The Board of Education uh, does a great job uh, moderating and overseeing that, but it is our choice to decide whether those are the things that we want or not. That's the, uh, my point there. My, my third question is... Uh, having if you could summarize, third. Yeah, my, my last point. Thank you, Nabil. Uh, sure. Having uh, attended many of these uh, uh, meetings, uh, we see year after year 
projects coming through because they probably need it and the uh, justification for them is, 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 is certainly uh, there. Uh, sometimes they draw on the capital reserves. Two years ago, we got money uh, used to do the expansion of the high school. Uh, last year, we got 1.5 million of the, the capital reserves uh, uh, for the fields and some renovation in the, in, the, in, the, in the middle school. At none of those occasions did we sit down and say, okay, what's coming ahead of us five years from now? I, I, I have a hard time believing that two, three years ago, we did not see this thing coming. So I think all these pleads, and you see the reaction from the community, we, we should have a process that allows the community as a whole to get engaged and involved in the decisions for our school districts in a term that is reasonable, make it three years, make it five years. New Providence is going through that. Sit down, gather the community, and have a plan that's beyond next year. Uh, Milburn did it last year, please, so please, that's, Nabil, summarize. That, that's, you're that was at, my you're last at six point. minutes. So, thank you very much. All right, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Are there any additional speakers, or is this our final speaker? Because you, I, any new speakers? This is this will be our final, but typically we don't like duping around because otherwise we'd be here all night. Is there anybody else that hasn't spoken that is feeling compelled or thinking about thinking about it? Mrs. Mortensen, if you would be brief, I'd appreciate it. I just felt it important to speak on behalf of this, the seniors in the, in the town. I you know a woman on the other side mentioned that everyone prospers by uh, increased taxes uh, because the value of the house is, is great when they sell. The seniors that stay here, many of them don't want to sell. They want to be able to afford to live in this town. And you know, a gentleman brought up the fact you want to have some old stories and some new stories and some in the middle of the road stories. And these seniors, you know, they're going to sell their house when they, when they die and leave the money to the kids. Many of them, that, that, that's, not, that's not the point. The point is you want to keep a good number of seniors in the town because there are one or two people living in the house. When that senior sells to someone because they can't afford to stay here anymore, they're not going to sell to another single person. They're going to sell to somebody who has a couple of kids, and that's going to even acerbate the, the crowding in the schools. You're bringing more children into the, into the community when a senior sells. So it's a, it's a nice mix to have you know, people with children, without children, old, young. And it, it's a matter of money, yeah. It's a matter of money. Can they afford to stay here? It's not a matter of money what kind of a killing they're going to make on selling their house. So I just, you know, I just feel that that was, thank you. You know, that, that was inappropriate, yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much. We are very sensitive to the senior citizens, as the, most of the community likes a nice homogeneous community. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. We really appreciate it. We appreciate the input. Um, we'll go back again, crunch some numbers, talk amongst ourselves. Again, though, next showing, February 28th, 9 a.m., Chatham Middle School. So if you weren't able to make this, and if there's any additional senior citizens, it's, it's at 9, so it's during the day, so hopefully they can make that meeting as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Drive safely.